people know that death is never better. Never better. Shout out all the signs and of all the people who are here who are out to speak and to promote a culture of life. All right. That was Friday in Washington, where they marked the 40th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion in the United States with the March for Life. Today marks the 25th anniversary of the Morgenthaler decision here in Canada, which stripped away all restrictions on abortion in this country. The Supreme Court ruling reads in part like this, forcing a woman by threat of criminal sanction to carry a fetus to term unless she meets certain criteria unrelated to her own priorities and aspirations is a profound interference with a woman's body and thus an infringement of security of the person. That's part of the ruling. Now, over the last 25 years, but there's been no end to the disinformation that has accompanied this issue. Today, the Wire Service, Canadian Press, well, they may take the cake. Here's how they open their article on the anniversary. It's been 25 years to the day since the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that criminalizing abortion violated a woman's charter rights. Actually, that's not what the court said at all. The court said the old law was too intrusive on the rights of women. Unlike the U.S., they did not find a right to an abortion in our Constitution or Charter of Rights. What the court found was the old law, as it was written, violated, violated the Section 7 Charter right to security of the person. But here is Chief Justice Brian Dixon writing on page 56. He wrote the majority ruling. He said, I wish to reiterate that finding a violation of security of the person does not end the Section 7 inquiry. Parliament could choose to infringe security of the person if it did so in a manner consistent with the principles of fundamental justice. Now today a new poll shows once again what I've been saying for a long time, Canadians have a mixed complex view on abortion, including, well, 35% say we should keep the status quo, 6% say they're undecided, and that big red block, those are 59% of the people surveyed by Angus Reid agreeing with one of the many forms of some kind of restriction on the issue of abortion. Joining me now for further discussion on the issue is Michael Corrin. He is host of the arena. And Michael, uh, it's interesting to see the way that this is always played out. And that Canadian press article opening with, it's been 25 years since they said you cannot do this, is stunning for a political journalist in this country to write. Stunning, but not really surprising. And, and this, of course, then influences and infects all the polls and the surveys because what happens is, you ask people questions and they've been told what the right answer is, the right answer for a generation, and so they respond in a certain way. I mean, the, 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 even if the courts have spoken in a specific manner, that's not actually relevant, as we've been told over and over again. I mean, when same-sex marriage is being debated, anyone who said, well, this has already been decided, was told, well, we move on, we progress. We know more about science now. We know uh, about human life. We know that at the point of conception, uh, an unborn child has a completely distinct DNA and genomic character, unlike anyone who's ever been born before. We know that in the United States, for example, uh, more than a third of all the victims of abortion are black babies. We know that women are targeted. So they, and ju I just want to pause on that point so that people understand why you bring that up. That is far in excess of their proportion of the population. About 12 percent. but So 12 yeah, percent of yeah. the population, but more than a third of the abortions. Mm. Because, look, there's been a, there's been a targeting. We, we, the, the main victims of abortion today, and, and I, I say this to anyone watching who doesn't, even if they think they've made up their mind, if you are female, black, brown, handicapped, your chances of being aborted are massively higher than if you are male, and white. If ever they found the gay gene, I mean, there's no such thing, but if they did, I also guarantee you that gay children will be aborted in the womb. We, we, we say we're so good with, with disability and handicap. Down syndrome, the gene would indicate the likelihood of, of Down syndrome. If that's to be found, there's an 88% chance that child will, will never be born. And we call ourselves civilized. So if you think you're progressive because you think the full funding of abortion is a good thing, you must then look at someone with a disability, look at them on the street and say, you know what, I, I want to create a society where you do not exist in the future. That's uh, very civilized. Here, there's a couple, of, um, a couple of good points in this poll. Uh, one, despite this misinformation, 45% of Canadians, yeah. and this is misinformation of itself, 45% of Canadians think that there are restrictions on abortion. So they don't buy into the uh, unfettered right argument put forward by places like the Canadian press. But also on the issue of Medicaid, the country split on this, which yeah. several polls have shown, and I think we've got the numbers here. So 43% say yes, it should always be paid for, 
by the healthcare system. 42% say only in an emergency, and 7% say not at all. So huh. right now, you know, that red, the 43%, is what wins. From the time of conception until birth, you can have an abortion paid for in this country if you find a doctor willing to perform it. And they love to say, well, there's very few uh, late-term abortions. But we're talking about when, there, when there's 100,000, yeah. five to 10,000 of them a year being late-term abortions, those are very expensive and yeah, look, displace other things that, that could be doing uh, done in the medical system. Ron, there, are there are very few abortions uh, after rape or incest. But believe me, every time this subject comes up, somebody would say, what about rape and incest? So, I mean... It, we all, you said until birth, birth, after birth, we now know that infanticide has occurred. We're, we're talking about between 50 and 70 cases a year, we think, in Canada alone. Most people, and I've spoken about this issue many times, like lectures and so on, most people are unaware about full funding. They're unaware there's no abortion law at all. So if you tell them this, if you rephrase the question, if you said uh, our budget for health care is finite, it's going to get tougher and tougher to, to provide what you need should we carry on funding elective surgery? They would generally, I would say 80 odd percent would say, no, we shouldn't. Well, this is elective surgery. Even those people who say abortion is there, it's a right. Many of them will say, but the government, the people, the public shouldn't be paying for it. Yeah, well, you and I will continue the open debate. Um, let's just show that last graph quickly before we go. This is the odd part because uh, Canadians are split. They don't like the status quo, but 59% say, uh, let's just not talk about it. Un that's unfortunate, Michael, but yeah, you and I won't right. let that lie. Mm. All right, Michael Corrin, you can catch him on the arena. We'll talk to you again soon. Pleasure. Email me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. The Crown, there's more to come.